<clears throat> on each motor unit. So theoretically, as the first shoe is leaving the power supply here, we should reach the next supply with good enough time for the back shoe to, to keep it on as it were, you know. So you get that from one shoe or another, it will be constantly in touch with the live rail. So basically eight feet between, between the motors. Or between the pickups. Now that comes through here and then is rerouted to another flight that goes to Dublin? Or you well, well, from here they will go to Campbell Buildings for a connecting service down to the, the necessary dock or whatever that will take it over to Ireland to get it into. So it goes by ship then basically to Ireland? I think so because it's marked up as surface air. Ah. So uh, surface mail. So it's, we get different types of mail. You get surface mail and you get air mail.
Now that. So the timer, that's why it's just right. This is one of the other things that we, we were a little bit confused with the computer system because the emphasis with the timetable is always to keep the trains moving, keep the trains moving. And we were always under pressure not to hold trains up. Mm -hmm. And yet this computer system does that. It's the way the system was designed. Mm -hmm. And yet they, they were, I mean, normally it's a matter of two or three minutes and they would tolerate that. But then we weren't allowed to hold a train two or three minutes. You know, when, when you, you're a switchman, um, you had your timetable. If the train came in early and it was loaded and the guys had finished with it, unless it was a stupid amount of minutes early, you would just send it on straight away. Because the more, the earlier, on a timetable system, the earlier it gets to the next station, the more time they've got if they need it. As long as it doesn't go late on that timetable. But this five minute block that's been built in means that you're always holding them back at the station until it's ready yeah. on the block Again, time to leave. This, this time of day, it's unfortunately, it's very awkward. And another part of the equation that wasn't taken into account, the computer system was designed for a seven station system. We're now down to six stations. So you've got the one station that was removed. They don't stop there, they go straight through. So you've lost part of that timer mechanism. And that's why it's actually West Central. So when they come from, from WPR, they should have stopped at West Central before coming here, but they didn't. So we actually get a couple of minutes extra on this platform, which if you've already loaded the train and given the ready signal, it's going to sit there for a few minutes. Really, technically speaking, they need to redesign the system. The program. Yeah. But until they've taken the other stations out and so on, it's not something that's worth doing. No, not a high priority, obviously. Now, you also have an express here. Does that mean that sometimes trains go through on the outside line? Yeah, we train. used to do that. Um, we used to have the Great West to East Anglia TPO Express and one known um, vice versa. And that was for connecting services from Liverpool Street to Paddington. Now with this one, if you want to, if you start your camera, you can walk down and get yourself in shop pushing a button if you want to. So that train's cleared the section now, so. Stations know that it's unknown because not they like to fucking just carry on yeah. pinging them down, don't they? Okay, mate. Hey, Rod, traffic controllers on this. It certainly is. Yeah, it's not like it's moving around. And also, we know exactly what we've got in, in the station area and what's in the sidings and the bits that we can't see. So they decided to leave them in for us. Now, but from the computer point of view, you have to enter a new number when you bring it out because it's the opposite end. Um, computer frame. Connected to the computer system up at Marrow House, and the information is coming down from Marrow House into that unit there. That in turn is connected to this relay panel. This relay panel is, in the majority, responsible for the safety systems that are in place. Uh, the majority of this equipment is dated around mid 1960s. Some of them have been replaced with more modern equipment, but the, the actual principle of the, the mechanics of the equipment has, has remained the same. Uh, basically when this equipment is satisfied that a route that's been selected is safe to invoke, uh, they will send the signal to activate one of these switches here, which are known as the contactor switches. Uh, we have two voltages, it's usually the 440 and 150 volts controlling main tunnels and station area. Uh, you'll notice that some of them bang in slightly louder than others and that's how you differentiate between the two voltages normally. But as a train moves through the system, you can actually follow it by seeing the switches are throwing in and out. The ones, the 
once these switch in, they're actually turning the power on to the actual track sections that the trains are running across. Because the old side of trains don't have covers on, they're actually quite easier, a lot easier to see the construction on the trains. Um, they consist basically of the motor unit which is housed towards the rear, lower down inside here. What you have down inside the front here are banks of springs. Now these springs are responsible for applying the brakes, which are pad brakes, which quite simply are pressed onto the running surfaces of the wheel to slow the train down. Now when you put power underneath the train to move it off, what happens is that this unit here is a large magnetic solenoid and that pushes down onto the springs to release this lever which gets the brakes off. Um, at the same time you will get the power running into the motor and that runs via these banks of resistors on the trains which you have a set on either side and another set in the rear. That helps to reduce any sudden surges of power into the motors and therefore prevents any wheel spin or burnout of motors and so on. And, um, that's it quite simply, the construction, which is probably one of the reasons why they lasted so well is because there's not an awful lot involved with them technology wise. They're just simple and functional. What we've got over the back here is actually on the back wall, one that's in its original form. It that's the only one that still exists in its original form in the world, as there isn't another one anywhere else, and that, that's kept here. That other, just a, a, another one of the oddities, that, that thing in front of it, that, that blue construction, um, it's actually a vacuum cleaner that was used, to, um, there's an extension reel on the back that was plugged in on the station, and then they towed it into the tunnels unwinding the cable as they went and vacuum the tunnels out. It's not something that's used anymore, as you can see. It's actually been recently pulled out of the tunnels. It was in storage in the tunnels. And, um, these are the only driver controlled vehicles that we actually have. So we normally keep two of them up here in the depot. And we've got another one that we keep down at Paddington. And the purpose of that is basically, I mean, if there is a problem with that end of the line, it's easy to use their own loco down there and to have to send one of these up. It cuts down on delay times and so on. Um, the battery banks, you have two of them, the larger one up the top and the smaller one at the bottom, generate about 350 volts supply. Um, it weighs seven tonnes and it's capable of pulling 18 tonnes over X amount of miles. I don't recall what the actual mileage is. Uh, so that's them. The one at Paddington recently underwent a complete uh, rebuild, so uh, they quite simply, by pulling the trolleys through, they can move them around. Obviously, as they go from one half of the depot to the other, they have to change the cables over to a different line and so on. But uh, by using the direction of running handles and changing direction and setting the points, they can basically shunt them around to wherever they want to put them. Very ingenious. Well, when you consider how long it's been here, and that was the method of control back in 1925, 6, 7. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it was way ahead of its time. The, this was the early 1900s that they were find the... That's right, I mean, the, back in the, the late 1800s, um, it, it, before it was a prison, it was um, a refuse tip. And it was brought up by, I think it was Middlesex Council at the time.